First at four, child abuse allegations against two officers in the Detroit Police Department. We'll talk about the charges, and we just got reaction from Chief James White. Also, one of the top athletes in the world ended up under arrest. Police say an officer has been injured in all this, what both sides are saying about their run-in around the PGA Championship. Here's Ron. Warm outside, but we're tracking some showers and thunderstorms across the metro area. It could be a wet drive for you. We are tracking it right on the Zach Track 4D radar. Show you where they are and where they're going to be. A story of fate and fate for this pair of elderly, developmentally disabled twins. I'll show you what happened when their sole caregiver disappeared after being struck by a car. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Devin Skillian in for Karen Drew. First at four, two Detroit police officers are suspended and facing child abuse charges in their hometown of Flint. Genesee County prosecutors say they are char they've charged Jared and Leanna Shaw with four felonies and two misdemeanors. The charges include a count of assault with intent to do great bodily harm by strangulation. Prosecutors said the officers used a chokehold on the two children. We told the victims are Leanna Shaw's children. Jared is their stepfather. Detroit's police chief says the department will cooperate fully with an internal affairs investigation and he will file papers to have the officers suspended without pay. And very disappointing, very troubling. Uh, anytime anyone engages in abusing a child, it's, 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 it's a problem. Uh, certainly uh, a police officer being accused of such uh, a serious offense. Um, there's a heightened sense of disappointment uh, that's not uh, representative of the hardworking men and women of the Detroit Police Department, over 2,600 strong, that show up every day wearing this badge and this uniform with pride. Um, we're going to make sure that we uphold that, uh, and there's no room for any of, of, of this, if, if, if true, uh, in the police department. The Shaws are free on bond. They will be back in court on May 30th. A man is in custody after police say he attempted to take an Allen Park EMS rig out for a joyride. You see the damage to the rig uh, from this morning. It all happened in Dearborn at Corwell Health. Police say a crew transported a patient there last evening as they were wheeling the patient into the emergency room. A man who was leaving the hospital jumped into the truck and started driving away didn't get far as the vehicle got stuck in a parking garage on hospital property, but right now charges are pending. You don't see these signs in Michigan too often. It's a warning for folks about a possible alligator sighting at Kensington Metro Park in Milford Township. First told you that report last night at 11. Some folks believe they have seen a gator in Kent Lake. Officers from the Oakland County Sheriff's Department, DNR and others were on the lake until after midnight trying to find the alligator. In spite of those efforts, no gator was found, but the warning signs are going to stay in place. And if anyone sees the alligator, they should give Metro Park Police a call. Boy, oh boy. All right, springtime in southeast Michigan brings a little bit of everything, apparently including an alligator. Uh, this is a live look at Southfield. We're tracking scattered showers, so some of us are going to stay dry. Others, maybe not as much. Ron Hilliard in for Kim Adams tonight to run down the risk. Ron? And Devin, those showers and thunderstorms are very slow moving, only moving to the east at about 15 miles per hour. So you can imagine as they sit over your area, you could get quite a bit of rainfall out of them. Here's a look over southwest Detroit. We have those temperatures on the mild side right now. We're in the lower to mid 70s across the area. But the big story, the showers, where are they? A Zach Trek 4D radar showing that most of the thunderstorm action right now around Saginaw. But we are seeing some of those showers popping up over the metro area as we zoom on in and look and see what's happening. You can see some of those showers right around the Ann Arbor area getting a little bit closer. Some of those showers are right around the Manchester area getting some of that heavier rainfall as we move back over toward the west into central portions of Metro Detroit. You can see some of those showers right around the Franklin area and as you get into the West Bloomfield area. So we are going to be tracking these storms again. They are very slow moving. Your forecast is coming up. First at four, we are also tracking new relief efforts and a Devastating discovery in Gaza. First, trucks containing humanitarian assistance are moving ashore from a U.S. built pier off a coast. That's what you see here. American troops are on site to help, but are not expected to actually go ashore. Relief groups are bringing supplies by land. They say that bringing them by land would be faster, but convoys are often blocked or all out attacked. The Israeli military, meanwhile, says its troops have found the bodies of three hostages taken by Hamas back on October 7th. They found the 
the remains of two women in their 20s and a 56-year-old man. The military won't say where the bodies were found, but Israel has been operating in Rafah. It says intelligence shows hostages are being held in that southern city. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is vowing to return all of the hostages, both the living and, sadly, the dead. A lot of people are talking about this guy today. This is the mugshot for Scotty Scheffler, the number one golfer in the world and the reigning Masters champion, currently playing in the PGA Championship. He had a run-in with police on his way to the term tournament this morning. Kimberly Gill, uh, what a crazy story, right? Well, it, it, it really is crazy, Devin. Good afternoon to you, by the way. In the span of four hours, a top-ranked golfer was arrested, had his mugshot taken, and returned to the PGA Championship to make his second round tee time at 10 18 in the morning. He was booked on four charges, including second degree assault of a police officer. As we look at video of Scheffler on the golf course today, we'll talk about what happened. So the golfer calls this a big misunderstanding. He just had a press conference a few moments ago. We know Scheffler was driving to the golf club was trying to drive around an investigation of a fatal accident. Police say he failed to comply with orders to stop, and one officer grabbed onto Shuffler's car, was dragged to the ground, and suffered pain, swelling, and abrasions to his left wrist. Most of the charges are misdemeanors, but the assault of that police officer is a felony. Scheffler quickly released a statement on X saying in part, quote, it was a very chaotic situation. I never intended to disregard any of the instructions. And of course, all of us involved in the tournament express our deepest sympathies to the family of the man who passed away in the earlier accident this morning. It really puts everything into perspective. Uh, Scheffler's attorney also described the incident as a misunderstanding and says they will litigate the case as it comes. Meanwhile, Scheffler just finished his round of golf in the last 15 minutes and shot a 66. Done. 66. Yeah. After all that. After being in jail. That's right. Dragging a police officer. Apparently had no trouble clearing Incredible. it from his mind. Wow. That's unreal. All right. We'll continue to follow that story. All right, KG. Sure. Now the story of a family that could serve as a wake-up call for any of us with elderly loved ones who need extra care. The story of these twin brothers could have ended in disaster when something horrible happened to their sole caregiver. Paula Tupman is live in Sterling Heights with a story of how they were rescued. Paula. Hey guys, yeah, so first of all, this is Gary who claims he's never played cornhole before. I don't believe it, he is too good. This is Glenn in the white shirt and this is really a sea change of what you're seeing right now because uh, they are here because of the kindness of strangers and the commitment of one nonprofit. Gary and Glenn, 76 years old, developmentally disabled identical twins who need 24 hour care and supervision. Their sole caregiver, their older sister, Carol, who was struck and critically injured as she crossed the street against the light. She landed in the hospital, and for four days, no one knew Gary and Glenn were alone or even existed. They do puzzles all the time. Dan is their nephew, who only recently found out he had uncles and an aunt. Yeah, six years ago, through uh, DNA, I was on a quest to uh, figure out who my biological father was. My daughter had gifted me a, a DNA kit for Christmas, and through that process, we discovered this family. When all of the dots finally got connected and police found the twins alone. They don't really cook, so they were just kind of surviving off of leftovers. Suddenly, he became responsible for them. Literally did not know what to do, said a little prayer. He got connected with a nonprofit, Next Step for Seniors Foundation, an arm of an organization that does placement for senior citizens. The foundational arm of the company jumps in to aid vulnerable seniors. Using connections, the twins got placed at American House, Sterling Heights. In certain circumstances, we're able to provide these financial resources and also just facilitate introductions like this one to American House to make sure that they're safe and thriving. How do you fund this? It's mostly through donations. That's where they met Mark, who was homeless until Next Step for Seniors Foundation found him. I was living in my car for a little bit and uh, it was uh, that we had that real cold snap back in February and it felt like you know, when I touched my chest it was like crackly and it was because of it was cold, so cold. The foundation found him a home at American House Sterling Heights, and Mark has become a surrogate big brother to the twins, showing them around, keeping them company, getting them accustomed to their new home. And now, 
they are thriving. I'm intimidated. I, I think you guys are doing this quicker than I would. An incredible jigsaw puzzle of circumstances woven through fate and faith that now has Gary and Glenn safe, sound, and happy. With fingers crossed, when Carol is released from the hospital, she will be able to join them here as well. We're also just a consistent resource for any low income or vulnerable senior that doesn't know what to do next in their life. Okay, come on, you can make that. Whoa! On live television! Good job! I just wanted you to look at these guys. They are thriving. They're actually getting ready for Senior Olympics. This is their life right now. And so, we're going to put information. Devin, I love this story. You've got twins. You understand yeah. this bond. So, we're going to put information on our website. Click on Detroit.com if you need help from Next Step for yeah. Seniors Foundation. Or even equally as importantly, if you can help them. So keep right. these folks house, keep the important work going. Devin. So right. What a great resource. And I'm with you. I believe good, they, right? were, they were totally sandbagging you on never having played before to pull that off on live television. <laughs> right. All right, Paula.